and when you're ready. Oh, okay. It didn't give me anything to agree to that. Okay. Yeah, hi. This is uh, Lee Finley. Uh, this is being pre recorded courtesy of David Banks. So I figure, being I'm not going to be a picture on the uh, program thing, start off with a picture. So we'll pass with that. Next slide. And we're here, uh, as it was started off, to uh, to talk about and a tribute to Wayne Leibel. Of course, this is him with, we think of him for fish, but everybody knows that he is also heavily tied in with music, which plays a, plays a great part of his life. Uh, he's for fish, he's for music, he's a teacher, uh, you know, a kind of man for man for all seasons. Um, Wayne and I were friends for almost five decades, so I will apologize in advance if I occasionally say we as opposed to him, because so much of uh, our lives were tied up together, uh, mostly enjoyable. Uh, we had some great adventures. We had some great fights. We had a lot of great projects that we worked on together. Next slide. We traveled together. Uh, this is a scene from from Peru in 1987. Uh, our, both of our uh, first trip to Peru uh, for collecting fishes, and Wayne and I spent two weeks there on a trip that had been organized by Chuck Davis from the uh, North Jersey Aquarium Society. But we did other traveling and meeting up to through fish conventions, workshops, shows for judging, a wide wide variety of wide variety of fish related topics. Next slide. But mostly we tried to have a lot of fun tying in the fish and the music. This here is from uh, when it used to be called a workshop, the uh, WWW, the Winter Workshop, in 1989, that uh, for a little pop-up, Wayne and I uh, got together, had a lot of fun. I wrote a song called Butt Barsh Blues, and Wayne did the music to it. Uh, Wayne could play the music very good. I can't sing worth crap, but it was a lot of fun, which is something we always tried to have. Next. We like to play dress up, and we did this on more than one occasion here in a Victorian mode. Next. And we also, I guess we can call this undress up for a program that we did for the uh, North Jersey show. Uh, very enjoyable running around up on the stage in your underwear. Next slide, please. Now, for Wayne, as a tropical fish hobbyist, his start was in the middle 60s. Uh, this is a picture of a young lad, Wayne, uh, and his dad, Archie. And in the mid-60s, Wayne was a member of a Northeast Council Club, uh, the uh, Exotic Fish Society of Hartford, and this was his first introduction into the, quote, organized hobby. As as time went along, uh, after he went through, got into high school and stuff, he stopped some of the various uh, organized functions, but still did maintain tropical fish. I was trying to find out if during his kind of undergrad years, when he was a Dartmouth, if he kept fish, but I haven't been able to uh, haven't been able to find that out yet. So this be to be determined. Next slide, please. The real good getting into the organized hobby again for him, uh, and which was heavy beginnings, was at the Elm City Aquarium Society. Uh, Wayne, in 1973, started at Yale working on his doctorate. 
And he showed up at the Elm City Aquarium Society, which is where myself and quite a number of other people first met him. And so began a, a long adventure and a wonderful uh, set together. At the time, I was the editor of this magazine called the Barnacle Chronicle, uh, which was a title that I was not particularly happy with at the time, but majority ruled. And uh, though I was the editor, I didn't get to name the magazine. So, but as time goes along, you know, now it has a nice ring to it. You can notice on the right-hand side here, uh, down three up from the bottom, uh, is a killifish guide by Wayne Libel. That is five pages, uh, five pages long. Actually, it's six pages. I can't even subtract very good. And this, at the time, Wayne was very much into killifish, though so he's known, became known strongly for cichlids. Next slide, please. This is just an example showing uh, the type of uh, writing with these long articles. Uh, at the time here, we were kind of crude in production, and my wife, Aline, did the typing for the magazine on the old Mimeo sheets that you had to type on and then run them on a drum to print out copies. Uh, and she would kind of like, oh, no, not another article by him. Uh, even though she liked it, she liked Wayne, but he came out with these uh, very, uh, very lengthy and detailed articles. Uh, this certainly showing the way that he goes towards teaching, uh, which he's always been uh, towards the hobby. And you can see on the right-hand side here, this was in uh, the November, December 75 issue with uh, with the thing, the part one of a series starting with New World Annual Killifishes, and it took up pages 8 through 14. Next slide, please. Here's just a the front page of this article, and you can notice bringing in the technical aspects here. Some Maybe a little more now, and maybe not, I'm not sure, but if you can notice here, actually with explanatory footnotes, and uh, artwork done by Wayne, uh, of which he was a talented artist, which is another uh, great work of his. And you can see here th this thing of doing this with these fishes. So he gave the magazine quite, quite a lot of flair. Next slide, please. And this here is an article another article by Wayne from Spawning to Hatching, The History of Egg Development. And this was his article, as he noted, and I believe David and Janine had it in their program for a memory that he uh, had of uh, regarding the Northeast Council, that this article, as Wayne put it, had caught the attention of the Northeast Council people. And... Uh, for the first workshop that was being planned. Based on this article, he was invited to give a talk, which he said his, was his first talk to fish people. So, you know, in a way, looking back on this, kind of a golden age of the Elm City Aquarium Society, serving as a jump off for introducing Wayne and having a lot of his works uh, available to the hobby at the time. And a lot of them are still valuable these days. Again, with some of Wayne's artwork on the right-hand side, those for the kind of crude printing that we did at the time, drawings that he had, we'd take those, run those down to the Kinko's or whatever uh, copy shop and copy off as many as we needed to put into the, uh, put into the magazine. So this is the kind of the early beginnings of Wayne within the hobby. And uh, like I say, he did it within the club thing and within the Northeast Council. He's, he's truly one of, the, one of the sons of the Northeast Council. Next slide, please. 
Now, Wayne, after he f- finished and got his Ph.D., uh, he began bouncing around, as many new Ph.D.s do, uh, grabbing a job here, grabbing a job there, without finding a particular uh, place. Or as recently in a memoriam written by Paul Loisel, who always has some very nice ways to put it, notice that Wayne spent five years drifting around in academic plankton, which is another way of saying that, uh, you know, he didn't have one steady job. He just bounced. And at the time, wherever he was throughout mostly New England, uh, he would be involved with the clubs. Uh, This is the journal of the uh, Boston Aquarium Society. You can see on the left-hand side here in 1982. And at this time, Wayne was serving as an assistant visiting professor uh, at Boston College. Uh, involved in the society, and this is where he really started doing some of his uh, neotropical cichlid writings, here dealing with uh, geophagus acuticeps, the name of the time, and always, always providing and always going for the local societies. You know, he's been just a treasure within the Northeast Council. He's been a treasure within the the world aquarium hobby and you know it's uh you know was always a pleasure that i've enjoyed my time that i got to spend with him uh we i'm gonna say many years together many decades and uh we had a lot of fun we had a lot of fights uh he was a great mentor uh to myself as he was with other people and I'm going to say somebody, somebody that I'm going to really miss. I, I still get these things now when I'm uh, doing some research on the computer and I'll run across an article and my mind says, got to send Wayne a copy. And it probably, you know, it's probably one of those little flickers of electrons in the brain that doesn't even take a fraction of a second. But As I'm thinking it, I know that it's not true, but I think I'll always be thinking it. You know, he's somebody I'll never, uh, never forget. Next slide, please. The one thing that through the years in showing the aquarium hobby material that uh, Wayne wrote extensively for all kinds of club publications and uh, the slick publications, the magazines of the hobby. And in a way, we kind of followed each other uh, early on. Uh, we wrote some wrote articles for Freshwater and Marine Aquarium Magazine. Later, uh, we both did lengthy runs. And I did a column, and he did a almost unbelievable series of lengthy uh, articles on neotropical cichlids for Aquarium Fish Magazine. And we both also ended up at DFH doing columns and freelance magazine, or freelance articles. Uh, another big interest of Wayne's and myself has been the history of the aquarium hobby. And this was the first article in a five-article series uh, that we did. We would have done more, but we got the, well, you know, we can't keep doing too much history in the magazine. So it goes from there. But this Footprints of Our Past, uh, yeah, Footprints of Our Past, which uh, was out in 1999, and uh, with both of our names appearing together, and it's it's proud for me. I'm proud to be listed and set along with him with uh, materials that we did in this area. Next slide, please. Just to end up, you know, there are many ways to remember Wayne and to think about Wayne. Uh, 
this picture here, which is one of my favorites of him, because Wayne was always fast to laugh, and he was also fast to get other people to laugh. This is uh, tied in with the Boston Aquarium Society here, uh, Wayne on the right, and Ken Torman, who was Aquarium of the BAS at the time. Uh, it's a slightly younger Wayne, a happy Wayne, uh, and this this is the way to remember him and, and everything that he did. I think that brings the slides to the end, and I would just like to make one one little uh, one little note here. A number of people have been helpful uh, in providing some slides and comments for uh, this little get together, and I'd like to thank my wife, Aline, Dave Quinn. Uh, R.I.P., you know, past Northeast counselor, Steve Edelstein, who is uh, a cousin of Wayne's that I've become become telephone friends and email friends with, uh, Jacques Brousseau of the Tropical Fish Society of Rhode Island, uh, another Northeast counselor, and Broadmeyer, uh, also of the Northeast Council, and I want to offer a special thanks to uh, David Banks, who has put up with me uh, in kind of getting this together and took a big stack of uh, almost scrambled JPEGs and turned them into this program, which uh, which I'm pretty happy with. So, And Dave was a big part of that. Okay, I'll turn it back over to you, David, and... Uh, you can go from there. Wayne Power. Thank you. <laughs> 